Hey guys, I'm Amy and I am here in Beijing. It's the city I've been living in for the last two years. Here I find it's really easy to get caught up in the modern buildings, the cars, the, the bars, the fast pace of life that you tend to forget that Beijing is an ancient capital and there's still so much of the culture and history that you can experience firsthand in this city. So today I'm going to take you deep into old Beijing to get a glimpse into the past and to see what Beijing was like through the centuries. So here, what I'm in now, this is called a hutong, and a hutong is basically the alleyway between two residential compounds. They come in all shapes and sizes. There are really wide ones like this one, there are narrow ones, old ones, more renovated ones, smelly ones, clean ones. This one that I'm in now, I think is the only one in Beijing that actually has arches like that. Actually, one of my favorite things to do in Beijing is just to grab my camera, pick a hutong entrance, go in and just get lost in the maze of hutongs because it really is a maze. You can you get lost in there and you see some really incredible like real Chinese stuff. So before the skyscrapers, the main roads and the cars, this is what Beijing looked like. So really a walk through a hutong is kind of like a walk through the past. So Hutong homes have been through many changes throughout the centuries. Originally, they were built um, more than a century ago as homes for the affluent residents here in Beijing. But during the 1950s and 1960s, due to political changes in China, these Hutong and Sihuyuan became very, very crowded. As Beijing swelled with new arrivals during this period, the former compound of a single clan may become home to over two dozen families. So as the Hutongs became increasingly cramped, I think this really predicated the concept of communal living. So here in Beijing, especially in the Hutongs, the importance of communal living cannot be underestimated. The Hutongs here in Beijing provide a glimpse into a way of life that while to an extent is being preserved, it's fading really quickly. This way of life lives on through the older residents that live in these Hutongs, but when they're gone, a hutong is not simply an alleyway between houses, it's the social backdrop for daily life. It's a place to convene, to drink tea, to gossip, to eat, to socialize, and especially considering the cramped conditions in many of the hutongs, you can see why it might be a preferable solution to hang out in an airy alleyway than in your own house. And thus, communal living was born. For example, let's look at the toilet situation here. Although the old residents have running water, few people actually have a private bathroom. So public toilets actually play a major role in local life. Believe it or not, these public toilets are a hive of social activity. <laughs> so let's have a look. So on the toilets, there are actually no doors. When I say communal leaving, I mean like you can literally see your neighbor take a shit. So yes, while these toilets may not be what you and I foreigners are used to, it does play a really important role here in the Beijing Hutong. And then there are the exercise stations like you can see behind me here. So these can be found scattered throughout Beijing, but no one appreciates them more than the Hutong residents. I don't really know what this does, but, but I'm here for it. At dawn and dusk, these are particularly busy as the older people meet here, get their bodies moving and have, have a chat. It's a great place to socialize. So as you can see, this communal way of living, you can definitely still see it in Beijing. And considering the often isolated and insular lifestyles of older Westerners, this communal living is really an aspect of China that I admire. In this way, Hutong life represents an old Beijing. But with the rise of globalization, westernization, urbanization, the Beijing Hutong has become somewhat of an endangered species. By 2005, three quarters of old Beijing had been destroyed. Developers had free right to buy the land, tear down the hutongs and build whatever they liked. There was no conservation plan in effect whatsoever. In 2005, the Beijing government finally released a new plan to protect the scattered hutongs throughout Beijing. And while the laws protected the original appearance of the hutongs, they didn't protect against the inevitable gentrification of the hutongs. Because you see, the hutongs had become so rare in Beijing, they were the new hip, cool commodity. For example, bars, cafes and boutiques started moving into quiet streets where, where locals were more than happy to give up their houses in return for good prices. These areas are now cool, chic hotspots, merging the old with the new, merging the traditional with the modern. 
So life in the hutongs is still thriving today. Um, like you can see here, this is Wudaoying. It's one of my favorite hutongs just because there's so many cute little boutiques and cafes. It's actually the best place in Beijing to grab a coffee. So there's a tip for you for free. And hutongs are definitely a tourist attraction in themselves. Check out this one. Uh, this is Nanlo Gusang. It's a, it's a really wide hutong that's been transformed into a souvenir, street snack, um, mecca for tourists, and also those who want like a, a glimpse into traditional Chinese life. Not so traditional, but hey, I guess it's better than nothing. So in this way, I guess hutongs have been in this state of constant evolution since they were created those many centuries ago. Then it provided housing for wealthy members of the population, then cramped conditions for the middle class during those 50s and 60s, and now I, I guess it's the go-to hangout spot for cool and hip Chinese and foreigners alike. Go figure. And while it's a shame that the hutongs aren't what they used to be, I guess it has to, like everything else, move with the times. 